Welcome back to Beyond the Bottom Line. I'm your host, Bert Miller. Today I'm thrilled because we have Raul Liao, who is the last 10 years has been the CEO of Virgin Hotels. And so I'm very excited to have, have Raul. Welcome. Great to be here today on this uh, rainy day in Delray Beach. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Nobody will be able to know when they look in the, in the, in the windows back there. So. Fair enough. Anyhow, so the goal here is we talk to a lot of leaders around the sure. world of work. And we talk about people and purpose and leadership and hiring. And, and so that's the goal of uh, Beyond the Bottom Line. So we're going to have a little bit of fun today. You ready? Absolutely. All right. So th the last 10 and a half years, you've been the CEO of Virgin Hotels. Yep. And I'm sure that's been a very, very interesting story. And I understand you're transitioning to a board role. That's correct. Tell I'm me a little about that. Currently on the board for, uh, for Virgin Group. I'm advising them on brand and other design matters throughout the, uh, the group, not just hotels at this point. No, so, that, yeah. that's great. So, um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about your achievements. What was one of your best achievements, Raul, as a CEO of the Virgin Hotels? Because I know it, yeah. you kind of gave birth to that. He did. It was, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun actually working for Virgin Group for the last ten and a half years. You know, Virgin Group and Richard are just as advertised. You know, progressive, caring, enthusiastic, and definitely a lot of fun. So, uh, you know, highly recommended an, an adventure with them any time. But I think the the greatest accomplishment was that we actually launched the hotel company out of a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> PowerPoint. So, Pretty much, they uh, they lured me away and showed me a wonderful PowerPoint presentation. And then when I got to the offices in New York, I asked, "Oh, I, okay, I've yeah. seen the presentation. Uh, where's the, like the product?" And they go, uh, "No, no, this is. The, you've got to put it all together yeah, that, now." That's the, that's the presentation. And, and that was the best part of it. A lot of intelligent people putting something thoughtful together, taking a look at an industry, trying to disrupt it a little bit, like Virgin does in every industry, mm -hmm. and then you know taking away some of the consumer displeasers if we could, but. It was an interesting uh, process getting there. Well, that's a, that's a great segue to what I want to talk to you a little bit about. So you had a chance to yeah. work alongside and work with Sir Richard Branson. Yeah. Tell me about that. One of the most caring individuals ever, uh, just very much common sense and uh, always thoughtful in conversations and dialogue. And you know, the great thing about Richard is that he, he actually gives you a lot of direction in his own way uh, without micromanaging. He really lets the companies do their job. He hires, his philosophy is really to hire the most talented people and let them do their thing. And that's exactly what my experience was with him. But, you know, we did have a lot of funny moments together. It is Sir Richard Branson, you know, lots of stories, uh, you know, especially on the design of the building and, and getting it all put together, whatever. But uh, he, he always acknowledges the things that he doesn't know how to do and always gives credit to the people that are actually doing the job. So that, that part of the experience was wonderful. We'll save some of the stories to part two you down, bet. down range. Yeah. However, you say he, he leads in a different way or he leads yes. in a way that you kind of know where he wants to go. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. I, I think he, he articulates the vision you know, pretty clearly of mm -hmm. the different businesses and where he thinks they should be going. But you know, he's always open to feedback, great listener. And I think one of the best compliments that he ever paid me for sure was that he said uh, at one point, and I'll tell that story later, he said, you're one of the best listeners ever. He said, and thank <laughs> you for that. He definitely appreciated that, but he's a great listener himself. All right, we're going to move on from Sir Richard, but one more point back to him. You met him yeah. for the first time. I'm not going to mention the brand or the hotel, but it was a South Beach hotel where he yeah. And you were called down to meet him, and that's really that was really your interview. Is that correct? I didn't know it was at the time, but I was uh, I had a company, and we were running a, a beautiful hotel in South Beach, actually, and met him there. He was staying. the The general manager of the hotel had worked for him prior, mm -hmm. and then he said, "Do you want to meet Sir Richard?" I said, "Sure." So I actually just got in my car, drove from Miami, and went to the hotel. And Richard was having tea in the lobby and just enjoying his day, and you know, in a little corner, not bothering anyone. And we spoke for about thirty minutes, and he said. Uh, this is like 2009. And he says, we're going to be launching Virgin Hotels in a couple of years. Do you want to run it? So I go, um, what's, what's Virgin Hotels? He said, well, we're diving into the hotel business, but we need somebody of your caliber and experience. And I love what you've done here with your properties. And I've heard about what you've done. And, and I said, well, uh, thank you, Richard. I said, I'm honored, but let me think about it a little bit. And then I did, you know, I owned a part of that company and a couple of years later they lured me away and uh, my business partner who was also English and named Richard said, 
you should go. You should go for it. You guys will get along great. He didn't pull out the PowerPoint right then, right? He did <laughs> not. He did not. But it was a great PowerPoint presentation, by the yeah. way. <laughs> so that's a that's a good yeah. segue again. Uh, yeah. So you think about that. Virgin Hotels was launched, yeah. and you were there to help launch it from the very beginning from a PowerPoint presentation. Yes. So give us a little insight of how you launch a lifestyle hotel from scratch. It's a great question. There's no straight answer, but I'll, I'll tell you about some of the framework around it. I think the, the first thing that we had to understand what was the concept going to be of this hotel company. We had to discuss, well, what's going to make us different? How are we going to disrupt or even try to disrupt the industry a little bit? So we had to come to an agreement on that. But I think, first of all, uh, within Virgin, there's a lot of emphasis on purpose. So we really had to decide what the purpose of the organization was going to be, and it took us over a year and a half just to figure out with our board of directors and other stakeholders and focus groups, what were the key things that we wanted to focus on besides just having a better product. So we spent a lot of time on purpose for the first year, the technology proposition. One of the things too that we wanted to make sure we were different on was, you know, companies spend a lot of time carving out the consumer journey, but they don't spend as much time carving out the corresponding employee journey. So we wanted to make sure that those two ran side by side. So we, we had plans to develop a proprietary app that we now call The Beat, which has been a great part of our success. It certainly helped us on even the diversity initiatives that the company was, was following. And that was one of our big successes, I think, to carve out an employee journey that was different to everybody else's. Man, that's so true, right? I mean, yeah. companies really spend a lot of time on the consumer brand. Yep. Very few have been spending time on their hiring brand. Mm -hmm. I think what we've faced for the last year or so is going to change some of that. Is it's accelerating without question. No doubt. So, all right, um, what's next for you? Well, something dramatic, I hope. But uh, you know, so certainly uh, aligning myself with an organization at this point in my career that shares you know my values and my passion for for service and and somewhere where I think I can make a difference. I think uh, right now is really a time for leaders to step up in the world and businesses change for you know CEOs and people that own businesses and what forth mm -hmm. and we have to have a point of view on so many different things and uh, I think uh, the impact on social impact today and having a say in what happens around the world is far more important than it was maybe even 10 or 15 years ago or even five years ago so uh, something exciting for sure but with an organization that shares those values. All right so you've gone through my notes obviously. <laughs> You keep going where I need to go. Okay. Tell me a little bit about CSR, so you know, corporate yeah. and social responsibility. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and how that's uh, so important to Virgin and how it's in, in integrated into the, uh, the organization. Sure, and I think for us it was about making sure that we had you know, different verticals in CSR, right? But I do think that as we speak about CSR a little bit, it, uh, it's about everyone. It really is, and I'll tell, I'll tell a story about Richard and I we had gone, I had been invited by Richard to go to the United Nations to a sustainability uh, meeting. And there was am some amazing people there, world leaders and uh, some CEOs of some amazing companies. And we spent about an hour and a half there and everybody had their say about what they were doing. So when I left, uh, you know, Richard said, what did you think? I said, well, let me think about it. And I had a couple of days to think about it. Then I wrote him a letter saying, you know, it's, it's wonderful that, you know, the leaders of the world finally are taking this seriously, right? And, and we're doing so many different things to help you know, people and planet. But I, I wonder how that messaging translates to the teammates of the hotels. Do they really understand you know, how to calculate carbon footprint? What does that mean? And I said, if we were, we could be maybe more progressive than most by saying, if we educate our teammates better at the hotels and they take that home to their families, that's really the way to make social impact in the world because knowledge is power. And I think a lot of times, a lot of that information stays at the top, and I think it needs to come down to the teammates. So we did a lot of work in, in uh, empowering our employees and making sure that they were knowledgeable about you know, CSR. But we broke it down into you know, diversity, of course, you know, sustainability, and some of the other issues that are going on in the world economically as well. We thought that if we're b breaking it down into verticals and we're involving the communities, and I can speak further to that, which was a big part of our plan, we're gonna be way more effective than the guys down the street. Well, corporate social responsibility, that's a lot It is uh, that companies need to reconsider in yeah. the organization. You mentioned the word purpose earlier. So talk to me about how purpose plays its role with a little more depth at Virgin. Sure. Is, you have like the three Ps, right? So we want to walk us People, through that. People, planet, and partners. Yeah. But, but I think as a, maybe as an entry point to that conversation, I'll tell you how purpose impacted my prior company because mm -hmm. that helped me at Virgin quite a bit. 
you know, because you, when you walk into a company like Virgin that's so purpose-led already, it's a little bit easier to get there on the purpose side. But I was running an organization in Miami, which is an interesting company. It was a bit of a hybrid hotel company. We had about 25 branded legacy hotels, Hilton's, Marriott's, those kinds of hotels. And then we had about 15 or 20 that were uh, lifestyle, edgier, boutique hotels, Miami Beach, all over the country. And one day we had our first conference, and it was interesting seeing the dynamics between the two cultures of those companies. And I thought to myself, I said, you know, the only thing that's going to make us amazing is that we all have one shared set of beliefs or purpose. And I had read a book a while back called From Good to Great by Jim Collins. Jim Collins what right. a wonderful book. And basically the premise of the book says this, look, if you have the right purpose and beliefs for your organization, it doesn't matter when C CEOs and leadership come and go. The beliefs and the purpose of the organization are what survive and what keep that organization going. And that's been true of many great companies like Hewlett Packard, who's been around for over 100 years, and Microsoft of today, and things like that. So we embarked on a two-year transition to find out what our beliefs were, and training our employees and getting feedback from our consumers and our shareholders. The weirdest thing happened, so we implemented our, our processes and our new beliefs and purposes, and uh, everything that we thought was going to happen was the other way around. Our employee opinion scores went down, our guest service scores went down, uh, even our profits you know, kind of tanked a little bit. Mm -hmm. We couldn't understand why, but we stuck with it. A year and a half later, we noticed that you know, a lot of people that had been with a company that hadn't bought into that purpose had left, and our scores started to climb again, and our retention you know, increased, and our guest satisfaction scores increased, because we had people that now that actually believed in the mission that believed in the value system of the organization. So when I got to, to, to Virgin, you know, we didn't have 5,000 employees like my prior company. We had to start to, from scratch with our shareholders and the teammates that we did have. But that was the foundation that we laid mm -hmm. for everything. So purpose, it was a great opportunity because we had the chance to embed purpose within every process inside of the organization from the very beginning. Every standard yeah. operating procedure, every design protocol, architecture, construction, what forth, and also technology. That's fascinating. So you think about you know where we're going today and in, yeah. in the world of work and what leaders really need to contemplate. That's going to be so important. And you talk about people walking across that bridge or yeah. some of them not walking across that bridge. I think if you go, right. back, go back to that book that you read by Jim Collins, Good to Great, and one of the things that he talked about was good is the, uh, good is the enemy to great. Right. And so to getting to level five leadership, yeah. which is really what you were talking about, that's a sustaining... That's right. uh, part of the brand going on with its employees and consumers, yep. uh, that takes incredible amount of work. It's just not like, you know, you hit a switch. So And it never stops. No. Exactly. It never ends. It's something that, when, you know, we talked about that in the first company. We said, remember, once we start, we can't stop two years from now. We have to continue. These are our beliefs. Here's our purpose and whatever else. And you have to, you know, continually work on that. Yeah. So the dynamics of that. So when you're sitting in the boardroom. Yeah at Virgin, who's in that room and how do you, how do you have that conversation mm -hmm. at a global organization sure. and a transcendent brand sure. of Virgin? How do you have that conversation? How does that cascade mm -hmm. to the entire organization? Well, it's a company that believes in reinvention. So it's, it wasn't that difficult. You know, we had the chairman of the board for Virgin Group. We were very lucky to have him. We had the head of private equity and real estate there, and then we had our two primary investors, and of course Richard would pop in from time to time, depending on what the discussion was at the board meeting, whatever you know he was interested in, right? But it was an easy conversation from that perspective because that board of directors fully supported that, they and and they wanted to know more about that, and they wanted to know, well, really, what's our point of view on diversity? What's our point of view on sustainability? So those two years were the formative years before we even opened a hotel, so we were ready to go by the time the first hotel opened. And your first hotel, first Virgin Hotel you opened was? In Chicago, which, uh, you know, is still my, my favorite. I can't tell the others that, but now they're hearing. <laughs> but still my, I'll probably will always be my favorite. Now. Marco will cut that one. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that, Marco. Anyway, yeah, it's a wonderful office building that we converted in Chicago and uh, near and dear to my heart. I cannot wait to be a consumer at, at one of your hotels. Thank you. So you, speaking of that, you are opening up in 21. In spite of everything, we have mm -hmm. uh, on the horizon, we have Vegas. Vegas just, op Vegas just opened. Okay, so. And then next you've got, uh, in the immediate horizon, you've got uh, New Orleans, 
June or July, and New York in September or October. And then after that, you've got the first two international properties, uh, which is Edinburgh, which is a beautiful building, and a beautiful new property in Glasgow. Outstanding. So for the next 12 months, that's exactly what's happening. And then after that, you've got a few others, Miami, Philadelphia, Ibiza, and a few other things happening. Well, that's great. So before we move on, for those that are out there, uh, anybody that, wa any, you know, if Richard Branson can walk into a hotel and meet this guy, uh, and somebody has something exciting, you may want to reach out to Raul. I mean, this is, this is outstanding. Thank you. So going from purpose a few moments ago, sure. and, and I appreciate you leading into that, I, wa I do want to talk about the three Ps. You call people, planet, and partners. I'm interested in that. Yeah. And that was a, that was a great one. And, and that was, you know, it's interesting when you, when you put a strategy around people, partners, planet. Uh, the most important part of it is really the partners, though. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, did you select the right partners that are going to help you get there to execute your strategy? And then for us, it was really, really important that the partners that we, the people that were going to be owning the hotels with us, the people that were going to be having the, to, to open some of the hotels and help the dynamics of the management company, were aligned on the value system of the properties. And I can honestly tell you that most of them were, but we had a couple that weren't, that are no longer you know, partners in the organization. But at least we knew that. We had a, a, a clear point of view. And one of the things when you work with Virgin Group is Virgin Group uses those words a lot, point of view. What's our, what's our point of view on this? And then once they, once they know what the point of view is, they have a, a, a mindset, a very, you know, almost a stubbornness mindset. We now know what our point of view is, and now we're going to go after it. So the right partners, obviously. Taking care of your people more than anything is number one inside the organization making sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can to take care of our people during even the worst times. And I think we did the best that we could you know, during, during the pandemic, but just on a day-to-day -day basis, not when things go bad, just when things are going well also. And plan it, making sure at the end of the day that we have a, a sustainability program that is fluid, that is changing, that you know, our goals, for example, were to be uh, carbon-free by 2030 as a hotel company, to be one of the first companies. So, as we looked into that a lot, we saw that some of the challenges inherently with the strategy has to be uh, the supply chain today, which is probably the biggest issue with sustainability today is how do we really know what's happening through the supply chain and how do we monitor it? Mm -hmm. So we were looking at all kinds of different things like that, but people, planet, and partners were really the most important things for us. And when you look at what's going on online, yep. I mean, we can talk digital here in a second, but look at what's going on online. That message is coming across very clearly yep. I mean, from, from Virgin. And so you guys have been very consistent mm -hmm. from the messaging or from setting the, the expectations to the messaging. Now, the care about people mm -hmm. is so important and virgin. And so I guess my question back to you as a leader mm -hmm. in the world of work, how do you maintain the accountability? Because sometimes people don't walk across that bridge yeah. and you want to be caring, but, but at the same time, you're, you're, you're running a business. And and you want to be consistent to the rest of your organization. How do you, how do you lead through that? I think it's just about being clear with expectations. Just really ne letting people, you know, you know, at the orientations that we used to do at the hotels, that I used to lead some of the orientations, we were very clear. We said, look, maybe our culture is not for you. Maybe this isn't for everybody, and it's totally okay. And if it's not for you, we'll still love you, we'll still help you get another job or whatever else, but this is who the brand is. So from our perspective, it was about having really, really clear expectations and then being consistent with the delivery of what we said we were gonna do, look, which is critical in any organizational climate. Do what you say you're going to do, gets you farther with teammates more than any other leadership trait. It's when management teams are inconsistent with the messaging that culture gets in trouble. Absolutely, it's kind of like the old sandwich method, right? Tell them something good, yeah. beat them up, tell them something good, which confuses the hell out of people. That's right, exactly confuses right. Confuses the hell out of people. So the messaging has to be very consistent from, right. from leadership all the time. You said something earlier that's pretty interesting. You want to be, you want Virgin Hotels to be a leader and be carbon free by 2030. Yep. How's that going to happen? What specifically goes into making that happen? Well, lots of things. And again, uh, whether, whether that goal is realistic or not, or even the goals that have been set by the United Nations now for the world are realistic or not. Uh, you know, for us, it was about creating the environment from day one we had a unique opportunity where we were building the buildings from scratch or redesigning the buildings from scratch so we could make the buildings were certainly going to be healthy, friendly to the environment. At the very least, they had to be minimum LEED certified, minimum LEED silver certified. And, from, and that also meant from the technology point of view and the construction piece of it and also all the energy management systems that we were doing all the right things from the building to begin with. 
And then of course, overarching those with all the employee programs behind the scenes. And what some of our teams accomplished just on composting and recycling and whatever else. The, the point of view of every business should be this. The, the, the environmental consciousness of the world has now been raised a thousand fold. So the question is, if you're not gonna change and have a dynamic plan and a bit of a, a, a balanced scorecard that goes along with your revenues and profits and CSR, then you're gonna be lacking two things, customers and employees. Because there's a lot of the teammates aren't gonna come to work for you if your value system isn't aligned with theirs. And I think that's certainly one of the most important things at this time in our history. The, the, the fact that it's at top of mind, employees mm -hmm. and consumers, yep. every single day, and that's the way you lead, it's, it's, it's fascinating, not only fascinating, but so, uh, I don't wanna say before our time, we've been talking about this for a long time, and mm -hmm. people have written books and, and all the things around that, but very few people have executed and led yep. that way, or very few companies and people have uh, executed that way. So kudos to what you've done uh, you. from a leadership perspective. So going back to the, um, uh, the sustainability, when you think about sustainability and in the construction mm -hmm. of the buildings, what does that specifically mean? When you said LEEDS, I, tell, tell me more about that. Right, so LEED has been around for a long time. It's a, a certification for leadership in engineering and environmental mm -hmm. for hotels. It means that you have to meet a certain set of standards relative to all building systems inside the hotel, including even what kind of paint you're using on the wall and mm -hmm. making sure that the supply chain is using the right practices to deliver a product that certainly is meeting whatever susta sustainable guidelines are met by LEED. But now there's also the well program as well, which goes a little bit further and is getting accreditization in different types of buildings all over the world. So if the buildings are healthy, if the systems are healthy inside the building and we're using the right products, and again, the supply chain, which is critical. And you know, I think about the supply chain this way. If there's a, you don't know where your coffee bean, what it took, what it cost to get that coffee bean into your cup of coffee in terms of the carbon footprint, you really don't. How long did it take to get there? how much energy is being expended to get it there, whatever else. So those are things that in the future, we think, I think that things like AI and blockchain are really gonna help us with, to help identify that data so they bring it to management and we can do something about it. Yeah, we'll know where everything starts, where, where it's almost from ideation yeah. to the time it hits your mouth, yeah. if it's a consumed product. So let's, let's talk about something moving forward. Sure. 1.5 million people are back on airplanes. Right. In March of 2021 a sign of hopefully coming back. Yeah. I mean, it's still a little lighter than the 2.3 million pre-pandemic. Yep. What are your thoughts about us coming back and how's that gonna affect hospitality in general? Yeah, so I do have a point of view on this. So I think uh, it'll be feverish at the very beginning. And I think for the next year, people will just want to get out because they wanna get out. And they've been uh, you know, at home in isolation and, and just for their mental health, they need to do it. The question is, once we get, everything comes back to normal, what happens to a normal hotel environment? Now that this has happened, uh, you may not need to travel as much, corporate business may be down. Certainly hotels that are in the leisure segment are gonna do well for a long time. But now you've also got the challenge of Airbnb and BRBO and, and, and other companies like that as well. So I think that the hotels of the future that don't have an overall experience that's more than just your rooms and maybe a not so good restaurant are gonna struggle, yeah. I really do. And I think they're gonna, the, the new hotels of the future and the new hospitality environments are gonna have to blur the lines between work and play. You're gonna have to go to one place where you can actually do a little both. You can work and you can play at the same time. And th those are the hotels that are gonna be successful. Isn't that interesting? I mean, if you think about lifestyle, lifestyle brands in mm -hmm. say beverage, yeah. uh, consumer products and lifestyle brands now in hospitality, whether sure. it be restaurants and that, experience that people are receiving yeah. and of course hotels as well. So before we get out of here, I want to talk to about digital a little bit. Sure. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how you led, because at the beginning you were part of the, I don't, I don't know if ideation, I maybe don't sure. want to take you down a rabbit hole here, but no, I just want course. to talk a little bit about what you guys did different from digital ahead of what others have been doing. Well, I think when we started, we had some limitations on digital at that point still. Mm. You know, and our, our point of view was to take, the, again, the consumer journey, digitize it and shorten it as much as we could. 
and hopefully lead with the app, which we were able to do. And the app was actually a major force for us during COVID. It really just worked to perfection. But I think moving ahead, the, the broader issue, not just for Virgin Hotels, but for the, for the industry, is how we do a better job at data mining all the information that we're getting. Because you do, again, have companies like Airbnb who, through AI, they have one platform, they're able to data mine all that information under one roof and are probably more effective than all of us with you know, 17 different silos and major hotel companies. So I think that's gonna be the biggest challenge for the industry. And we were moving towards a platform that was gonna, be a lot, was gonna be allow us to do the same as Airbnb, which is slice and dice all, all of our data uh, in a little bit better way. And I think most companies are gonna be moving in that direction. I think they have to, because uh, you know, data is gonna be king in the future. It is, it is now already, but uh, I don't think companies in our industry are exploiting it yet the way they should. Well, abundance mentality tends to help drive change. Yeah. Yes. And when people have an abundance mentality, what they don't realize many times, yeah. because they're only thinking about the six inches in front of their nose, is that, that that sort of mentality will actually lift everybody up. Yes. So, no, that, that's great. Anything you want to share before we get out of here? Yeah, I think people generally want to know, again, what did you, what did you learn? You mm -hmm. know, what did you learn yeah. from Virgin? And, uh, you know, I feel, like, I feel like Virgin is like family. So, uh, but I think I, I'll allude to what I said before. You know, it's about, uh, these are life lessons. Resiliency uh, and embrace change. And keep, you know, keep reinventing yourself and, you know, don't look back because the world around you is reinventing yourself every day. And I think the success of that organization under Richard has been exactly that, that they're not afraid to reinvent themselves. He's, he's gone through a bit of a reinvention himself even over the last 10 years. And he's now, uh, you know, trying to save the planet and the world and what forth. But I think that that really applies to all of us. Really, we should continue to try to reinvent ourselves all the time. Um, there's no reason why we shouldn't. And being bold. Absolutely. Record companies. Take chances. Yeah, record companies, don't, trains, spaceships. Don't be afraid. Cruise ships. Don't be afraid. Hotels. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and by the way, and the last most important thing is uh, don't be afraid to uh, make fun of yourself and have okay. a sense of humor. And, and enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah. We take ourselves way too serious. For totally. Little. So uh, for those that are out there, I don't know if uh, they may have glossed over the fact, guys, he hung out the United Nations. So one of his key meetings, he rolls with Richard into the United Nations. Like he just, he just said that like it was in passing. Not bad. I mean, yeah. it's, 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 it's a good hang. A little hotel guy, not bad. Not bad, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you for being on the show. I really Pleasure. appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to uh, continuing further discussions down sure. I'm looking forward to what happens to you next. You bet. Raul. So You'll be the first. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. This is Burt Miller with you from Beyond the Bottom Line.